Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where you discuss what makes you your soul's highest evolvement. I'm super excited because this is the first time I'm actually recording a video of myself doing my solo cast. So head over to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Sahara Rose to actually receive the full transmission of this with me looking at you in the eye on the camera, which is really fun. And I've been majorly activating my YouTube channel so much more with my new Discover Your Dharma series. I have all of the videos of the interviews that I have been doing on there. So be sure to subscribe on YouTube because just seeing each other face to face adds a whole other level to it. And I am really excited for today's conversation because I love to make podcast episodes about common spiritual terminology that I see and that I often see being misused. And to share my understanding of these terms, which again is not the final understanding, but I feel what happens a lot in the online spiritual space is one person hears something and then repeats it. And then those people hear that and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it. So then we have a lot of people emulating one person's understanding of something without questioning it and taking that to be true without the full context of humanity. And what ends up happening is we all hold ourselves up to this standard of what something is supposed to be, again, based off of this description, and it's not entirely true. So I've done a podcast episode about why the term toxic positivity just doesn't make sense. You can Google that episode, and that's a really good one to dive into. I did one about the word spiritual bypass and the many ways that this word is misunderstood and misused. I've done one about the term cultural appropriation, so be sure to check them all out. They're all really juicy. And today I wanted to talk about this term that I have heard for several years, and more recently I see it really pop up in the spiritual space, especially with business coaches who are moving into manifestation work, and this is the term quantum leaping or quantum jumping. So I wanted to talk about what that really means, what that is, does that actually exist, and what are the holes in this understanding from my perspective. So the the meaning of quantum jumping originally comes from quantum physics. So the actual definition or idea around it is the idea that electrons can jump randomly and instantaneously from one orbit or energy level into another without ever occupying the intervening space. So it's actually quite a scientific term about, again, atoms moving into another parallel reality. If you look into the multiverse theory, it's the theory that there isn't just this one universe, but there are many universes, in fact, infinite universes, the multiverse, where every reality is simultaneously happening right here at this time. So every potential version of you simultaneously exists. So there is a version of me right now that is sitting on the couch. There's a version of me right now that's swimming. There's a version of me right now that's homeless. There's a version of me right now that's a Hollywood star. Every version of me right now in reality exists according to this theory. And in fact, all of these versions of me are happening right now. So me as an old person dying is happening right now. Me being born is happening all in the here and now, because right now this moment is the only moment that exists. If you think about it, there is no such thing really as the past or future, because every moment that you're, when you were in the past, you were actually in the present. When you're in the future, you're actually in the present. So Basically, it's really questioning our linear time understanding of like a series of events that happen that lead up to an outcome. And and it's saying that every possibility is happening in the here and now. And definitely on a scientific level, quantum physics level, this, this, I mean, it hasn't been disproven. So I can't say it's 100% true. It is a huge conversation happening right now in the scientific community So no one's been able to prove it false, and we're also not able to prove it to be 100% real. So that's really where it comes from. I feel like a lot of people talking about it have never actually addressed the science behind it. So that's what it actually means. Now let's talk about how it's being used and interpreted today. How I see it be used is this idea that you can do some sort of meditation and visualize the version of yourself that's doing or having the reality that you want to experience And by doing this meditation, you step into this version of yourself, then all of a sudden you're in this new reality. 
So for example, let's say I want to step into this version of myself as a Hollywood A-list actress. I'll do my meditation, visualize myself as that, and wake up, and apparently I should notice some subtle difference because I'm now in that reality or closer to that reality. So I also see it used in if you can focus on something and put it on your vision board and do your affirmations around it, then without needing to do the work for it, you can just quantum leap and just have that thing without taking the steps needed. So a lot of people like money coaches say you can like quantum leap and become a millionaire tomorrow as long as you believe or have the mindset of a millionaire. Or if you feel like a millionaire, then there's nothing stopping you from being a millionaire. So that's how I see it be used in today's um, today's common jargon. Now, as a child of immigrants, as an Earth sign, <laughs> as a Capricorn, and as someone who has you know written four books, created a multiple seven figure business, I have manifested a lot of things. I will say that a lot of what is going on about this topic is bullshit. (laughs) And I'm going to say it because I wish I had known that. I mean, luckily, this wasn't really a big thing when I was building my career. I actually understood that it takes hard work. But I see what's happening right now is this idea is being sold as an alternative to taking the necessary building blocks and steps that is necessary to hold that reality. And more than that, it's discluding the feminine in the experience. It's focusing only on the masculine, only on the thinking mind, and on this idea that Your reality is only based off of your thoughts when the truth is your reality is based off of your embodied experience. So this idea that I can just quantum leap and think and meditate into an experience and become it is discluding the feminine cycles of a nature that need us to go through the processes and seasons that allow us to actually build and cultivate that reality so we can embody what it truly means to be in that result. So let me give an example. So let's say I do my meditations and I, you know, manifest my way into becoming that Hollywood A-list celebrity. Well, guess what? Maybe I'll make, maybe I show up on the set and I'm with Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt and all these people. And guess what? I don't know how to act. I, I don't know how to memorize lines. I'm hella nervous in front of a camera I haven't done any of the work to be here. So even if I got that role, I wouldn't be able to hold it because I haven't embodied myself as that type of actress. So let's say I manifest my way into giving a TED talk. Well, where's my talk? Who wrote that? Who memorized that? Who practiced that? Let's say I manifest my way into writing my best-selling book. How did the book get written? How did I go through the process to learn the stories and the experiences and the obstacles that I share in the book if all I did was quantum leap to get there? So the very thing that this idea is missing is the juice that actually makes that thing worth sharing. There is no point in you writing a book if you haven't gone through any sort of obstacle or story or challenge to share. There is no point in you You know, even if you do manifest a million dollars into your bank account tomorrow, do you know how to hold that amount of money? Do you know how to manage that amount of money? Do you know what to do with that amount of money? So we're trying to skip the steps, which is, again, a very normal thing. We all want the bright and shiny object on the other side, and most people don't want to do the work for it. But we don't realize that the work for it is what makes us become it that without that training, we won't embody that result. We want the embodiment. We want to be that confident person who's on stage, but we don't realize that that confident person who's on stage didn't just get the opportunity to be on stage, but they did all of the practice that it took to actually deserve their space on that stage and be able to shine on stage and be able to hold their own on that stage. So this idea of quantum leaping is sold to us often by people who are not even doing that themselves. I mean, I I know a lot of these people and, you know, someone is recording those YouTube videos, uploading those YouTube videos, putting the thumbnails on it, doing the SEO on it, managing their team. I mean, there's a lot of doing and work that goes behind that quantum leap video. And 
we love the idea of it. And it's such a marketable and easy idea to be like, you don't have to do any work. Just like do my meditation and like buy my quantum leaping and jumping course. And like, that's it. But the truth is that very person that's sharing it with you has done a lot of work for them to even be in a position for you to have heard about them. How many of those videos have they posted? How many courses have they launched? How many years have they been in business? We'll take a quick break so I can share with you this special offer. Okay, do you know what I'm literally obsessed with? Like, this is the thing that I travel with, I tell everyone about, and I'm so grateful that they sponsor this podcast because I literally would just spend all my money on them, even if they weren't my sponsors, and that is Organifi Gold. So this stuff is magic in a bottle. It has turmeric, lemon balm, ginger, reishi mushroom, turkey tail mushroom, coconut milk, Ceylon cinnamon, and black pepper. And best of all, it's naturally very sweet. I think it's because of the coconut milk powder in there. So you can literally be in a hotel room and just add it to hot water and just without any added milk, it's so good. And if you're taking other herbs or supplements, you can really put it in there and you don't taste it because this stuff is so naturally delicious. Plus you don't even need to because it has all of the good mushrooms in there. I am obsessed. And they also have an incredible green powder that is so good for boosting up your immune system at this time. We all need it. It is packed with micronutrients, hydration, ashwagandha, everything you need to stay healthy. So we got an incredible discount for you, which is 20% off all of their products. You can head over to Organifi.com slash Sahara. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com slash Sahara to get 20% off your orders. That link is in the show notes and you guys are going to love it. So I share this because from the outside, and I, I know I used to feel like this, I thought that there was some sort of quick fix or way or one action I could take and then I would be successful. And the truth is your your life is a result of all of the micro decisions that you've made on a daily basis. How you spend your mornings, the energy that you have, the time that you put towards things, what you prioritize, relationships in your life, your mindset, your exercise, all of these things accumulate over time. So even that best-selling book, it's word by word by word, and then editing and then proofreading and then going back to it again and all of the stages that it takes to bring that book into life. And the reason why I share that this quantum leaping idea discludes the feminine is because the feminine is the process. The feminine is nature. So ask a a woman who's given birth, can you quantum leap and your baby will just like appear in front of you? No, it's actually the process of you going through that impregnation journey that prepares you to become the mother. So nature has its own pathway and and what we're missing and we can really learn from nature and learn from the feminine is that patience. You know, it can't always be summer all the time. And I, I spoke about how I received the download, move at the speed of nature rather than technology. What I see happening is we're so right now hyper attuned to technology and the masculine and the air and space elements. We're very, very vata. We're really in our heads. So we think, oh, I can just, just like I download this new app, I will download my seven figure business and download my best selling book and download my TED talk and download my top ranked podcast because those people have it right now and I'm seeing them on their screen. So what's stopping me from having it? Oh, it just must be my belief. Your belief is the beginning, but even from changing the belief, there's still going to be a process of work and finding other challenging beliefs and working through that and other challenging beliefs. We don't show up on top of the mountain without the hike. And the top of the mountain, the summit is not even worth it without that. So the process of discovering your dharma is what actually prepares you to embody it. You can't just wake up and 
all of your problems are gone and you're living your dharma because those problems are even there for you for a reason. They're a result of decisions, of ancestral trauma, of karma, of all of these things that we get to move through in this lifetime that actually prepare us and become our training school so we can step into our dharmas. So it's time for us to really honor the process and not see it as this negative thing that we need to bypass and skip over to get to the shiny results because those shiny results aren't even going to be worth it. They're not even going to be possible without the process. And when we hear about these things like quantum leap, I invite you to just ask yourself that question. Is my highest self actually desiring me to like quantum leap and not do the work? Or is it coming from my ego? Is it coming from my ego wanting to, you know, stay small and take it easy and not challenge myself? Because your highest self actually wants you to evolve. Your highest self wants you to move through the experiences that will shape you. It's your ego that's afraid of it. So it says, give me the final result without the transformation part. But you're not going to embody that fullest expression without the deconditioning of what is even preventing you from being that expression right now. So yes, I do believe that quantum leaping can exist in the viewpoint of you can take massive action in a small amount of time that can really propel you towards the direction of your dharma or the experience of Kriya that I write about in my book and my story of Deepak Chopra. 100% there are periods of rapid growth that you can experience and you may be noticing synchronicities and just hyper flow in those times. And those opportunities For example, me walking up to Deepak Chopra require courage. And even behind it, it was four years of me writing two books on Ayurveda before I could even have something to offer him. So I couldn't have just manifested, I want to write a best-selling book on Ayurveda with Deepak Chopra to write the forward, had I not actually gone through the process of writing a book, getting rejected by 30 publishers, trying anyways, getting hired to write another book, writing that book. Like There were many, many, many steps, a lot of preparation until I had the opportunity. And even that opportunity required courage, my decision to spring into action. And then all of that together created a quantum leap. So we can call it a quantum leap or we can call it devotion and dedication and step-by-step movement towards my dharma, which finally, when all of it aligned, I went from one reality to the next, but really it was a result of all of the steps I had taken to build that pathway there, which by the way, have continued since. That, That experience was five years ago now. So I share this with you because I think it's really important for us to hear the truth of what it does take behind these businesses, these books, podcasts, speaking, whatever it is that you want to do, because it can, it can actually set us up for failure. If we think that it's just a result of doing one meditation and all of those things are going to happen and you just must not be doing the meditation the right way. Do the meditation. That can definitely help you get more clarity, get inspired, and support you in becoming more clear about what it is that you want. 100%. I've had experiences from breath work that I had ideas of things that just channeled through, which I may not have had the space for that in my mind if I I was just in the doing. So this is why I write in my book, Discover Your Dharma, there are three stages to living your dharma. Vata, the air energy. So that's the idea, the space, which, you know, the meditations and the quantum leaping and the breath work, all of that allows the idea to come through. But then there's the pitta, the action, the fire, the sacred doing, which is just as necessary. And then there's the kapha, the sacred pause, the reevaluation, taking a step back, questioning who am I now that I've changed through this process? And then that beautiful space, that soil allowing the next seed to plant through. So we can't just stay in in the vata and think, I'm just going to think my way into these different realities without doing, without grounding. I'm just going to keep thinking and thinking and thinking. 
that's moving at the speed of technology rather than nature. And what it's going to do, one, it's going to fry us out, but two, it's just not going to lead to any results. So again, when, when people share, oh, you don't need to take any action, just think about it and it will happen. I mean, just look at their results. And you ask yourself, if this were true, are they living that reality? And I see for myself, of I know so many inspiring people and they're all doing on a daily basis. And doing is not lesser than being, you know, it's why we are here as humans. I see a lot of people when I write about this in Discover Your Dharma, they say, oh, I'm a human being, not a human doing. Like doing is like so 3D, like I'm so over it. But we as humans are here to create. That's why we have formidable thumbs. That is why we have the desire to even make art, to find meaning in the stars, to find medicine in the plants. This is why we are here. So honor that sacred doing, that desire within you to create. That really is what makes you your highest self. And then let that thread propel you into taking aligned action, moving through obstacles, stepping into higher and higher and higher versions of yourself that before you know it, you quantum leaped. But really it was a result of devoting to your highest self on a daily and daily basis. So I hope this helps you understand this term a lot better and see it from a different, more divine feminine, ancient embodied experience. And it's also so important, I just wanna note this, that the body is really what holds on to our stories, our trauma experiences of our past. So again, we can't think our way into different realities when our body and our nervous systems are saying something else. So without the embodiment work, we don't really even have the full picture. So if you are wanting to step into these higher versions of yourself, besides the doing part, I also invite you to have embodiment practices. So whether that's shaking and releasing stagnant energy and trauma, dancing and opening up your heart and allowing yourself to creatively express without judgment, moving your hips and releasing blocked emotions. I share my goddess embodiment practice and my, my um, healing and embodiment through dance program, which you can find in the show notes and they're all available for you in rose gold goddesses. But without embodiment, we're never actually gonna be able to hold that vibration because our bodies just simply won't believe it. You know, when our bodies are in a state of survival and fight and flight, we can't, we can't convince ourselves otherwise because the, the tissues hold the issues. So that's another missing thing that I see happen. And again, what, I, what I'm so excited about right now is we are remembering the integration of the feminine, the integration of the body, the integration of our dharmas, because without it, it really does just become spiritual entertainment. And that's what a lot of what I see is. It's like, oh, I had this vision of myself and I'm like, great, now what? What are you gonna do? How are you gonna help the world? And that's what I see missing. So this is just my reminder to you to invite your whole you to the picture, your challenges, your pain, your body, your heart, your feminine, all of it is just as important in the spiritual journey. So if you're curious in learning more with me, doors are opening back up for Dharma Coaching Institute to spend six months training with me to become a certified spiritual life coach and soul purpose coach. We speak a lot about the nervous system embodiment, and you actually train to guide other people to discover and live their soul's purposes. So if you like my style of work and you're interested in actually launching your own career as a certified spiritual life coach or soul purpose coach, then this is the perfect opportunity for you. We have like weekly classes, opportunities for you to coach and get feedback, Q and A's with me, an amazing community, and so much more. The experiences that students have had are beyond transformational. People joining the program, not even knowing if they ever could become a coach if it was for them and then graduating, having businesses, creating retreat centers and so much more. And it just really speaks to how far we can go with dedicated, devoted and embodied practice towards a shared common goal of raising the vibration of the planet. So if you're interested in joining me and learning more, head over to dharmacoachinginstitute.com. That's D-H-A-R-M-A coachinginstitute.com. And I'm so excited to see you inside. And if you love this episode, be sure to subscribe to the podcast or the YouTube channel, wherever you are watching this for more. And let me know 
Any other spiritual topics or terminologies that you'd love for me to do an episode about, I would love to dive into it with you. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one. Namaste. Namaste.